G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be looking at a couple of distros that didn't quite make it for the uh, lightweight distro series. Unfortunately one was um, I was going to look at um, was slightly over in size and the other one I was pretty keen on however I couldn't get it installed and to me that was a bit of an issue. So I would have liked to have seen how it run installed. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about. This was the first one I was going to look at was Sparky Linux. And I checked out the Sparky Linux web page and we've got the 5.13 LXQT XFCE. And you can see the download sizes there are well over a gig. And then we had the 5.13 Minimal GUI. Well, this was the one I downloaded, 962 megabytes. And then you've got the, the minimal command line and 5.13 ARM. So I thought, I'll check this one out. Even though it's over 900 megabytes, it may be just that worth that little bit extra. So I just thought I'd check it out. Sparky Linux is uh, based on Debian. Uh, this one's uh, based on Stable and this one here is based on Debian testing. So this is the Sparky Linux minimal GUI we have here. And unfortunately, it probably didn't come with everything I was hoping it did. Uh, what have we got here? File manager about, we got Thunar file manager there. And a terminal. Then you've got a, a run dialog box. And your menu. So this is your menu. Now some of the icons are sort of a little bit uh, all over the place regarding consistency in size. <laughs> um, not sure what's going on there. I don't know if that's a virtual box thing. I'm not sure. Um, so let's have a quick look at what it's got in here. It's got time shift, um, system upgrade there, QPDF view, mouse pad, screenshot there. Bleach bit Aptus, I think, is a. I cannot remember what Aptus is. So, this is your Aptus. Oh, yeah, it's got the codecs and audio players. And so, oh, yeah, it's like a um, software manager, I suppose, isn't it? Office. So, for 978 megabytes in size was the Sparky Linux minimal GUI. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with what was in here for that size. I thought there might have been a lot more. But that's the way it is. Um, still 900, really, to be honest. 978 megabytes is is not is not huge, really, when you look at most other distros coming in. On average, probably 1.8 to 2.2 and a half gigs, maybe these days. It does have an image viewer. Sorry, I missed that. So this is the Sparky Linux version. Looks like it's still on 5.12, so it may need to be upgraded as well. And you've got a calendar down here. Tried to get the monitor uh, bigger, or the resolution. Doesn't want anything to do with it. Says you cannot turn off all monitors, so that would probably be a virtual box thing as well. You've got an open box conf configuration manager here. And HTOP for Sparky Linux is uh, 215 megabytes. That's not too bad at all. Yeah, so that's why I decided not to look at Sparky Linux. I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Just not sure about the size, uh, the inconsistency in the icon sizes. But um, I can't speak on that too much because I'm running in VirtualBox. Might be better on real hardware and might even be better after an upgrade. I don't know, but that was Sparky Linux, and that's the reason why that didn't make um, the lightweight distro challenge. Now the next one is Sleetaz, and this one I was really hoping I could get this one going, but I could not install Sleetaz. I downloaded the um, Sleetaz 5 rolling, I think it was. Let's check that out. So Sleetaz rolling and Sleetaz rolling core. Now I think I tried two of them, uh, what size are they? 68.5 megabytes and 55 megabytes. So I had a lot of hope for this one here, but unfortunately I couldn't get it installed. Also the web the website seems to have a few issues as well because 
Google Chrome seems to be marking it as insecure all the time, and I had a hard time getting this website to load. Sleet has, and if I click on this one here, probably take me to downloads, you probably find it won't open. It's just really something, something about this website's not right. So I've noticed with this Sleet has website, if you if you go anywhere outside of sleetas.org, there seems to be issues. That's gone to English, that's fine, but if you click on any of these, uh, you're probably going to be struggling to load any web pages, like so. So I don't know what it is about that website. So let's have a quick look at Sleet has it started up, and we've got um, plenty of options here on startup. Languages, English, US, so we'll go with that. Just enter to boot. Then it goes to these options here. So we've got Sleet has Live, Sleet has Core Live. I've tried a few of these, but I'll just go to Sleet has Live. Now I did look up some YouTube videos on how to install Sleet has, and it seems as though I was on the right track in the way of going about the installation. So as far as I know, I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. Everything I was doing should have been working, but unfortunately it doesn't want to work. So we go to System Tools and Sleet as Installer, and the password is root. Now we go to Install Sleet as. Now you can execute Gparted from here. I won't do that because I've already done it. So we'll continue the installation. I don't know if we could get a large screen in here. Just let me have a quick look. Although it probably doesn't matter anyway. So from what I gather, we're running the live CD. And that's what most people choose is live CD. Now, I also went to the trouble of actually in the live disk downloading the Sleetaz ISO and selecting from here the ISO file. And that still come up with an error. So I don't know what the deal is with Sleetaz. So as you can see here, ext4 dev sda2 is the disk I want to install to. Formatting options is ext4. I don't want a home partition. Host name, I'll just put Sleetaz vbox. Root password, we'll just put one in there. User login is my name and then my password for that. You'll, you'll get to see my password here. <laughs> and install a bootloader. And proceed to Sleet as installation. Now it's as simple as that and that's the way it's supposed to work. Now I'm kind of hoping it makes a liar out of me here so it installs, <laughs> but I doubt it very much. So it does all that okay, but then it gets to there and says error dev sr0 mount failed, process not completed. From from what I gather it's, it's struggling to find the um, the live ISO or something like that. That I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I see anyway. But I've tried many, many different ways. I even tried, I think if you have a look here. Yeah, there's uh, Sleet has rolling, and then I downloaded a Sleet, Sleet has rolling core, five in one. I think that might have been the first one I downloaded. Then I downloaded this one, core plus. I don't know which one that was. But yeah, this is the... This is the issue I was facing, and I don't know how many installs I did. It was countless amounts of installs trying all different types of things. And this thing here looks, Sleet has looks very promising as a lightweight distro. I mean, it's, it's only 50 to 60 something megabytes in size, and it's already got a lot of things in here already. It's got a spreadsheet. Now I don't know um, what spreadsheet that is. Somebody might know, but 
I definitely haven't used this one before. It's just called spreadsheet. Help. So it got about. Cannot find an about anywhere, but it's got some heap of games in there. It's got an image viewer, MT Paint. It's got Midori, private browsing, Twitter microblogging, not that I would use that, but somebody might, I don't know. Multimedia, it's got a, an Asunder D CD ripper, Elsa Mixer, video player, video player full screen. It's got a PDF viewer. And this is what I'm saying. This thing's got everything you need. I just cannot get it installed. And I and I decided that for that reason, um, it wasn't going to be a part of the um, lightweight distros because really at the end of the day, we need to be either get it installed or, or make some sort of... Um, I don't know if it's got persistence on a USB. I didn't check that out. But I was hoping this one was like a... The install itself is fairly simple. There's, it's not... Nothing, it's nothing complicated at all. And I was hoping that this could be a direct install to disk and away you go. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case with Sleetaz. Let's have a quick look at the uh, Sleetaz task manager just quickly. And Sleetaz is running, and we're running in a live environment, don't forget, but that's running 50 megabytes of memory. That's pretty good. Interesting though, I installed um, HTOP in Sleetaz. Although their task manager is saying 50 megabytes. Let's have a quick look at the task manager here. 52 megabytes of 3546. HTOP is um, reporting 249 megabytes. So I don't know which one of those would be correct, but I have been using HTOP right throughout this series, just for consistency purposes. And I'd probably have to think this one's reporting correctly. I'm not sure. Its resource usage is very economical either way you look at it. So you can sort of see what I was up against there. Um, it was driving me absolutely crazy trying to get that thing installed because it was quite promising as a lightweight distro. I've seen that, that one there as um, a little bit of competition for Antics because it seems to me like Antics is sort of way up there ahead of most of them. And this one looked very, very promising. Now, there might have been some more requests, but uh, I'd pretty much had everything set out what I was going to do. There were some late requests. I didn't get around to them. That were the two distros I was going to include. And uh, Sparky Linux, it was fairly way off, so I'm not too disappointed in that one. But I was fairly disappointed in Sleetaz. So I might um, I might pursue Sleetaz a bit more just in case there's some sort of errors within the ISO itself. I don't know, because I've seen people do exactly what I just did in this video here. And it installed no problems at all. So whether the latest ISOs have some issues or it's a VirtualBox problem, I'm not sure. There might be somebody out there that can let me know. That would be great. And maybe um, outside of the uh, distro challenge, we could probably check it out, I suppose. But they were the missing lightweights. Uh, they were the ones that I, I um, had included that didn't make it. And any other late requests didn't really make the list. And sorry if it was one of your requests. There might have been only one or two, maybe just one that I didn't get. It could have actually, I might have it here. I'm not sure if I can even put it up there as some information. I do normally save these things. I oh, could have been this one star. I'm not sure what that is. Let me have a look. Travel light, run fast, just works, Debian powered. Oh, it's, so it's a Debian powered um, distro. I didn't get a chance to look at that. So that was the missing lightweights. And after this video, I'm going to be sort of summing up what I've done here with the lightweight distro challenge. Uh, we're pretty much coming to the end of it. It might take me a little while just to sort of, I may need to go back through some of the videos because this is 
This challenge has gone over a month or longer, I think. So um, I may have started just before Christmas. So it's been a little while. So I haven't really, to be honest, given much thought about how I'm going to finish this lightweight distro series off. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I think I think there's definitely a, a clear winner in amongst all of this. There might even be a good uh, second and third as well, possibly. But um, I know somebody was asking if I could compile a whole heap of um, uh, memory differences between all the distros and so forth. I could possibly do that, but um, I'll, I'll just see what I can do. But all we really want to know is um, what was the best one that you could use <laughs> at the end of the day, I suppose. But I might go back and have a look at some of those things anyway. Maybe throw in some screenshots or something like that. So anyway, that was the missing lightweights as part of the lightweight distro series. Next video will be um, finishing off the series itself and seeing uh, what we think is the best lightweight distro out there. And I might uh, maybe throw a couple of videos in between because there are a couple of things I've been wanting to look at since I started this challenge. So it might give me a chance to check them out before summing up the lightweight distro series. So anyway, that was the missing lightweights. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative and thanks for watching.